want to welcome you. to today's facts behind the figures presentation hosted uh, by the Nigerian Stock Exchange and featuring uh, Lafarge Africa PLC. Uh, this is the second virtual facts behind the figures that would I believe we lost the voice. Toby, are you there? Okay, I'll just sort of jump on um, in Toby's absence. I think he's, he may be having some network connectivity. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, of course, uh, Toby mentioned we are hosting our second virtual packs behind the figures um, on behalf of Lafarge Africa. Um, the CEO is unavoidably absent and I'll be representing him today. There's a speech I have to read. Um, that has been prepared in, in view of this event, after which Lafarge will give us a short presentation. And after that, we'll have a Q&A session. Uh, and I'll kick off with, uh, with um, my prepared remarks. Good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you all to today's Facts Behind the Figures presentation by Lafarge Africa PLC. As today marks our second virtual Facts Behind the Figures e uh, event since the COVID-19 pandemic, let me on behalf of the council management and staff of the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the entire capital market community, commend the board and management of Lafarge Africa for utilizing this platform. This presents as an opportunity for Lafarge Africa to inform the market of its financial performance, as well as the strategic and operational developments. Given that the market is driven by timely, relevant, and accurate information, your interaction with the market through this forum is vital, and we encourage you to continue with this trend. The exchange has continued to remain resilient in recent times, leveraging various digital platforms and innovative technology to ensure business continuity and an interrupted dissemination of information to the market. The Nigerian Stock Exchange recognizes efforts made by the board and management of Lafarge Africa PLC towards achieving business continuity by improving operations and restoring investor confidence in the company. Indeed, the growth reported by the company's 2020 half-year financial performance shows the strategic resolve and dedication of the board and management of this esteemed company. Despite challenging operation conditions in the country, it is noteworthy that Lafarge Africa PLC reported a growth of 2.25% and 159% in revenue and profit after tax respectively from June 2019 to June 2020. This laudable feat, amongst other achievements, earned the CEO of Lafarge Africa, Mr. Khaled El Dokani, the recognition at the recent sixth edition of the Business Day Top CEOs and Next Bulls Award, which was hosted in collaboration with the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Let me also hereby congratulate the CEO and his team on this very well-deserved recognition. The exchange also commends the company's efforts in covering the spread of COVID-19 and its recent interventions and donations to support national efforts towards cushioning the effects of the pandemic on the Nigerian populace. At the Nigerian Stock Exchange, we continue to work to provide a platform to, supply, to support listed companies in meeting their strategic business objectives. We will continue to position ourselves as the African exchange of choice for issuers and investors by implementing policies aimed at strengthening the corporate governance of our listed companies and providing products that are aligned to investors' requirements in a fair and orderly market. In the wake of the COVID-19 pandemic, the NSC transitioned to complete digital trading through its electronic platforms, including Trix Protocol, XNet, and Virtual Private Network Access. We also launched a revamped version of our XSure platform to enhance the continuous flow of relevant and reliable market information and to enable stakeholders to make informed investment decisions. To cushion the impact of the pandemic and restrictions on business activities, we made provisions for the palliatives to mark the market stakeholders. This includes granting a 60-day extension to listed companies on the filing of audited and quarterly financial statements 
collaborating with the SEC to also extend the submission of audited financial statements for all our drilling member funds in the bid to support the government's directives and efforts in the fight against COVID-19, the exchange redeemed its pledge to the Capital Market Support Committee for COVID-19 with a donation of an ambulance as well as 27.5 million naira. The Mask for All Nigerians campaign was also launched by the exchange to galvanize private organizations and individuals to provide face masks to Nigerians nationwide, most especially low-income households. We commend Lafarge Africa for supporting this laudable initiative by donating 15,000 masks and are proud to have received commitments from other organizations, associations, and individuals. On our value added services, we introduced Century GRC, a digital platform that automates back office functions such as governance, risk management, and compliance, thereby enabling organizations to pursue a systematic and organized approach to managing GRC related strategies and implementation in an efficient and cost-effective manner. With the fast-changing macroeconomic environment in Nigeria and globally, we encourage the Lafayette Africa PLC to strive for sustainability by adhering to the highest standards of disclosure and corporate governance. We believe that's, that this will position the organization to attain deeper social impact, higher regulatory compliance, and more importantly, greater returns for shareholders. We thank you, the invited guests, for your presence today and encourage you to participate fully during the interactive session. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll now invite Lafarge Africa PLC to make their presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ulmidi. It's, uh, it's always a pleasure to be with you. Uh, my, my deepest congratulations for the Nigeria Stock Exchange for all the efforts that has been commanded over the last uh, period. Uh, the significant support to companies who are listed in the stock exchange. Uh, we do appreciate very much your contribution, your efforts, your support uh, throughout the previous period, along with your significant support to our communities and, and granting the support and the facilities to get throughout the COVID-19 uh, situation. Uh, secondly, I want really to deeply appreciate uh, me and my team, the recognition that took place on business day jointly with New, uh, Nigeria Stock Exchange uh, for the commendation to me as a CEO and for Lafarge Africa PLC uh, recognition that took place uh, two weeks ago. Uh, my deepest appreciation for our audience today and it brings us a great pleasure to share with all of you the facts behind the figures of Lafarge Africa and the strong performance that we have witnessed uh, compared to our previous year. So I would go for the presentation and I have with me uh, my colleague, uh, our country CFO, Lulu, uh, who will be participating with me in running through some of the facts and some of the numbers as we go. So Lafarge Africa PLC, uh, as everybody is aware, is part of a, a, a biggest number one construction material company in the world, Lafarge Holson. Uh, Lafarge Holson has about 72,000 uh, employees across the world with 264 cement and ready mix plants, 649 aggregate positions, and 1,400 on ready mix sites and other activities. Uh, we are present in over 70 countries across the globe, and we share a lot of benefits, knowledge, and recognition from each other as number one player in the construction material in the world. Okay. Second slide, please. So I, I would love today to share with you, uh, Lafarge Africa PLC, uh, our vision, mission, and the core values. We are establishing the mindset of one team, one direction among our team. We carry on our vision to be the preferred innovative building solution partner in Nigeria creating value for our stakeholders and our mission to be number one building solution and construction company in Nigeria. How we can leverage on our vision, mission and core values is through the greatest and utmost attention to our customers, focus on our results, overarching integrity, sustainability, people openness and inclusion mindset. Health and safety will remain as always being our overarching embedded value in everything we do, okay? Uh, 
it's very interesting to share with all the audience today the evolution of Lafarge Africa PLC in Nigeria. We've been here since 1959. We started in West Africa, Portland Cement Company Limited, that was established almost 60 years ago, and we have celebrated the 60 years presence in Nigeria earliest. We carried on our progress until 2019, where we have kept investing and consolidating our position in the country to strengthen the Lafarge Africa presence in terms of adding capacities to the market, graduating uh, students from faculties to be part of our key members, developing and sustainable our communities around the plants that we are operating on. Uh, we are present in uh, four states where we are operating in different elements on the cement level as well as on the ready mix as well, plus our mortar business uh, that has a growing footprint uh, in the coming years. Lower. Our plant capacities are uh, strategized here according to the footprint, which is shown on the map. We are present in Evekoro Ugun State as well as Shagamu with a collective capacity of 4.5 million tons. We are in Cross River State on Famosane plant at a 5 million tons capacity. And we are in Gombe State in a Shaka plant with a 1 million tons capacity. Our solutions and products, we segment and attract the attention of different levers of the market through individual home builders, block making, infrastructure, specialized application, and other innovative solutions. Our cement is being present in most of the dominated markets in Nigeria at different products that suit the applications applicable in the country to best service our customers as well as introducing the road stabilization products and self-sustained resistance product, which brings another value of application in the market. This, in, on top of that, there is the tile adhesive products and our footprint and presence on the ready mix as well. Okay. I'm very proud to share with you our board of directors led by our chairman, Mr. Adobe Adefiori, Chairman. Uh, we are one of the companies that we are very proud that almost 40% of our board members are uh, gender diversity, where we have very reputable uh, ladies on our board that brings extensive value and knowledge uh, from all across inside Nigeria and outside. So I'm very pleased to have this great diversity in our board members led by our chairman. Okay. On the same level, this is uh, representing my XCOM team, uh, which again, we have a very clear focus on enhancing our gender diversity and the components of our board, where we are 30% represented by ladies that brings a lot of leadership, excitement and challenge to the rest of the team. Uh, the team on uh, my XCOM is really well diversified, comes from different backgrounds with a strong acumen of the business that brings a lot of value in everything we do. Okay. Hello, second, please. Can we go back a little bit, please? One slide forward. Yeah. So on our strategy, we do a simplified pathway to make to meet our stakeholders' needs. So we seek growth, we seek simplification and performance, we seek financial strength and vision and people. How are we going to deliver that? Please go ahead. Uh, 
So one of the key elements of our strategy is the sustainability. And sustainability is basically the model that we are taking in our business in Lafarge, Africa to deliver our vision. So climate and energy, our commitment to reducing emission is undertaken in 2019. We reduced our dust emission and kiln stack by 28% and reduced our net CO2 per ton of cementitious material by 1.3% to 535 kilo per ton compared to 2018. On circular economy, we continue to use waste material and byproduct from other industries as alternative fuel uh, to find it, our natural raw material and fossils fuels in the production of cement. Our geocycle function drives the use of alternative fuels such as biomass, agricultural waste, and non-degradable parts of pharmaceutical drugs and content wrappers in our kilns. On the environment level, we are committed to reducing our environmental impact by ensuring all our operations comply with environmental laws regulations and standards applicable to our products and operations. We continuously subscribe to leading industry initiatives. Our process and structure are designed to ensure that we do not diminish the social, economic and ecological processes that are necessary to promote sustainable communities. We continue to engage and partner with our communities to ensure we deliver stakeholders value. In that regard, I'm very honored that we have as Lafarge Africa managed four webinars over the last one month to support the sustainable development goals of Nigeria. In these webinars, we have hosted extremely well panelists who can contribute towards the initiatives of the country towards developing the sustainable development goals. And this is one of the initiatives that Lafarge Africa leads in the country to show the commitment and the partnership to our business, to our country that we are operating in. Please. This is an example of our corporate social responsibilities, which is impacting almost half a million lives through our CSR programs with activities valued across to 1 billion Naira. So on the construction of wells, we have initiatives that has an impact on 5,500 beneficiaries the provision of the poor holes and the toilets in public primary schools, construction of nine classrooms with furniture and toilets and donations to the poor holes. This has a beneficiaries of almost 178,000 beneficiaries. Nationwide agriculture, we have projects for residents of Ashaka and we are surrounding communities in Ashaka with 700 farmers, 4,150 volunteering hours in that regard, which has an impact on 10,000 people. The construction of a drainage system of the Agura Aruba and the construction of 150 meter long reinforced concrete road. And we carry on our sustainable initiatives in all of our operating communities, including establishing of concrete roads, creating access to people for education, tackling illiteracy, and we have many events where Lafarge Africa is contributing towards education system, grading of our new generation to have a better opportunity in education and for further career opportunities. One of the things that we are very proud of is the contribution of Lafarge Africa over the COVID-19 crisis where the company has donated 500 million Naira towards different initiatives, including specialized training on COVID-19. We provided buildings to be used as isolation in Ashaka and Southwest, provisions of medical supplies such as nose masks and hand sanitizers reaching over 10,000 people, provision of washing stations across the communities, including Famazane reaching 50,000 people, increase in water supply provision communities estimated impact of 33,000 people within the Ashaka neighborhood of our plant. On the financial highlights for quarter two of this year and the full half year performance on the net sales for quarter two and due to the April and, and May COVID-19 impact, 
our net sales were lower by 5.1% in Q2. However, our recurring EBIT was up by 29.7%. Net income was up by 60% compared to last year. And our net debt has been reduced by 59.3%. Despite the fact of the COVID-19 in quarter two, on the full six month performance, we were up by 2.3% on our net sales and 17.8% on recurring EBIT and 47.3% on the net income level and the net reduction at 59.3% compared the same period of last year. Okay, thank you, Khalid. Okay. So I'll leave the floor for Lulu to get into more of the number details. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Khalid. Uh, thanks, uh, Lulu, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. So I'm just going to go into uh, the details of the of the of the number. Uh, I will start with quarter two uh, first. So, like Khalid said, our revenue closed at 56.8 billion in quarter two, which represents a 5.1% decline uh, versus uh, last year. The decline was uh, driven by a 3.7% volume drop as a result of a COVID-19 pandemic, particularly in April. Um, we were worst hit in, um, in April, and then we saw recovery uh, from May throughout June. So by June, uh, we fully, fully recovered, and we've come to a positive uh, growth by June. Our headline prices uh, was flat, negative um, that you are seeing that it's purely uh, due to regional mix. Our cost of sales closed at 32.8 billion, which represents a 13.8% uh, decline versus last year. Cost of sales margin improved by uh, 590 business points from 63.5% in quarter two 2019 to 576 in uh, quarter two 2020. The upside on cost was majorly driven by optimization of our quarry costs, raw material prices, inventory movements, and the general initiatives uh, during this period to continue to optimize uh, our cost. So basically, we looked at all the lines within our value chain to look at to look for opportunities, and in most of the initiatives, we delivered uh, ambition. If you go into administrative costs, administrative expenses closed at 3.2 billion, representing a 46.4 decline versus last year. The decline was majorly driven by office and general expenses. And again, thanks to our health cash and cost initiatives, we were very proactive um, before the pandemic. And even during the pandemic, we identified um, opportunities uh, where we uh, optimize our, our costs. And we can see the results in our, uh, in, in our general cost line. Recurring EBIT closed at 21.2 billion, up by 29.7 compared to last year. And then if you look at our margin, our recurring EBIT margin improved from 27.3 in Q2 2019 to 37.2 in Q2 2020. Going to net finance cost, we closed at 1.8 billion, a drop of 67.2%. Uh, last Same period last year in Q2, our net finance cost was 5.4 billion. The decline was uh, mainly attributed to the reduction in gross debt. This time last year, our gross debt was 207 billion naira. Uh, in Q2 uh, 2020, we have uh, our gross debt was about 55 billion. Most of this is uh, the bond, 34 billion we have, um, and then some of the um, some of the power funds uh, that we have as well. Um, um, our debt currently stands, net debt currently stands at 15 billion. So we have a gross debt of 54 billion and a cash, a cash equivalent of 40 billion, um, and then a net debt of 15 billion. Profit after tax for continuing operation closed at 15.3 billion, up 60% versus last year. Annual per share from, from continuing operation was 60% up to 95 cover. Uh, in line with net income growth. So on H1, to quickly summarize H1, I mean, net revenue grew 2.3%, um, despite the, 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 the challenges of COVID-19 uh, pandemic, um, we saw a volume growth of 2.2%. 
uh, each one uh, price link was flat, a recurring EBIT close at 32.8 billion, which is a 17.8 compared to uh, last year, and a net income close at 23. Next, um, so uh, this is basically a, 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 a recurring EBIT bridge explaining the movements between our uh, EBIT in Q2 2019 and our uh, EBIT in Q2 2020. There's a differential of about 5 billion. And most of this, if you add price and cost, you have about 6.3 billion, um, majorly driven by all our cost optimization initiatives and partly mitigated by volume, volume loss, uh, particularly in the April that, I, that I've mentioned. Next slide. Free cash flow, uh, we generated a positive uh, free cash flow of 23.4 billion, which represents about 50% cash, uh, cash conversion. Uh, one thing I'd like to clarify here is that if you eliminate the impact of uh, customer sales backlog uh, paid by customers in December 2019, we're actually seeing improvement in our working capital. So we're managing our working capital efficiently. Our inventory level, um, we're focusing on optimal optimizing the, the inventory level, uh, payables and receivables, uh, well managed by, by the team. If you go to the next slide, uh, I've, I've talked about this. Net debt, uh, like I said, close at 15.1 billion, a decline of 146%. Uh, we were at 37 billion, um, and the decline was immediately driven by cash from operation. I mean, we have a cash of about 40 billion, um, as to speak. If you go to the next, so and just to summarize before I hand over to, to Khalid, I, with these numbers and it's clear, the fundamentals of our business are very solid. Our margins and profitability are improving. We're in a better position to where we were two years ago. Uh, uh, we have, a, you know, we've deleveraged our balance sheet. We have a debt, uh, lower debt position uh, from, uh, remember 2018, where as high as 260 billion worth of debt uh, debt net debt. Uh, we closed June six months at 15 billion. Our GR ratio is, is significantly improved uh, from 67% in 2018 to 16% in 2020. Our uh, no, uh, interest coverage is also has improved. So overall, we have a healthy business uh, in Lafarge. Khalid, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Lulu. Um, now I'm, I want to give a, a very brief outlook on. Uh, how the management looks at the market in, in Nigeria going forward. So uh, the economy is expected to shrink by 5.4% in 2020. This is an IMF indication, primarily driven by the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the impact of drop in oil prices and the current forex liquidity challenges. Despite the impact of COVID-19 uh, pandemic in H1 2020, uh, we still maintain uh, a positive look at the medium and the long term of the economy of the country. With the gradual easing of the lockdown by the federal government, we will continue to focus on the business resilience to maintain a healthy balance sheet while prioritizing the health of our people, communities, and other stakeholders. The implementation of our health cash and cost initiative has and will remain uh, in focus to deliver and improve our performance going forward. So at, at, at this level, uh, I would hand over be back to you, Omidi, and uh, we are open for the Q&A session. Um, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Khalid. Um, so we have um, a couple of questions here. Um, I'll just start with um, a question from Mr. Taufik Salako. So it says, in the area of free, of free float, what is the company doing to rectify um, its current free float and avoid the tendency for over concentration of shareholdings, which may lead to fictitious pricing. Well, the, the free float is driven by the two angles where there's a, a minimum threshold to fulfill the requirements of the free float. I believe that what we do in terms of the performance of the company, the strong results uh, quarter after quarter and on a full year basis will enhance the share price and will enhance the uh, impact on, on our share that can overcome the challenge on the free flow. Okay, thank you. Um, we also have another question here from Mr. Salakoy. It says, what is the outlook for the Nigerian cement industry? Well, I, 
for for us, it's it's two elements because uh, we still believe on the medium to long term. The uh, the cement market is very promising. Nigeria is uh, a country that has around 200 million of population. There is a continuous demand on infrastructure, on buildings, uh, whether on individual uh, homeowners or on the general mega projects of the country. So we maintain a very good and positive trend of the cement consumption in the market year over year. Okay, thank you. Um, one final question from Mr. Salako. Um, it says, what will it take to bring cement price down to say 1,000 Naira per 50 kg? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, pricing of cement is mainly a supply demand. And uh, it's very difficult to talk about bringing the cement prices down or up. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a mutual formula of the supply demand. Uh, uh, cement is a product which also influenced by micro markets. Uh, it's very difficult to be generalized on, on a country level. So uh, I, I don't have a straightforward answer on how the prices will, uh, will come down, but I would mainly refer on the supply demand ratio. This is the only element which is really influencing the pricing. Okay, thank you. Um, so we also have some questions here around um, debt refinancing. So it says, does the FAJ have plans to take advantage of the relatively cheap cost of debt to issue debt to refinance some of its current debt? Well, the current debt is not, uh, is, is not a problem for us. I think our cash position is very strong. Uh, we can manage our current debt with the, with the current structure. Uh, looking forward, uh, it's always to be considered in line with our investment. Uh, plans in the country rather than really financing what's existing right now. Okay, thank you. Um, are there any plans for Lafarge to buy back some WAPCO shares? Uh, not. Uh, my short answer is, is, is no, and I'll leave Lulu to get into more of these details on, uh, on WAPCO shares, but my short answer is no. No, I, I, Khalil, I'm fully, I fully align uh, with you. Uh, the, short to medium term, we don't have any plans to buy our shares. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, so we have a question here from um, Bright. It says, in Ethiopia, the Ministry of Trade and Industry said that it was granting licenses for the import of 16 million tons over the 2021 financial year, ending 7 July 2021. The order required importers to import a minimum of 3,000 tons of cement on or before 8 December 2020. Has Lafarge Africa looked into that market and why? Well, we have not looked at this specific market in particular. However, export is one of our uh, main elements and part of our strategy. Uh, whenever we have a surplus of uh, cement uh, that we can export, uh, as part of Lafarge Wholesome worldwide, we have very strong position in other African countries where we can leverage on and export to these countries. For us, export, apart from uh, being into the export business on, on surplus of clinker, it's a very good tool to generate foreign currency for the country that can reduce the pressure on uh, the liquidity issue uh, when it comes to foreign currency. And for us, we still rely on imports of spare parts and other important materials. So contributing towards generating foreign currency to the country, I think is a big value that we can bring. Okay, thank you. Um, so I have a question here from Olu Fikayo Owoye. Says, what has been the impact of selling, selling off Lash on your balance sheets? Are you open to doing more acquisition in other markets going forward? I didn't hear the question well, but I think you're referring to South Africa sale. Um, what has been the impact of selling off LASH? Oh, that's that's Lafarge South Africa business. Yeah. Uh, it, it was a, a great move. At the time we did the acquisition, it was the right decision at that time. Uh, the South African market was booming, and for us, it was a very good move at that time. Uh, with the financial crisis that took place, things turned around. I believe the decision that the, the management and the board has taken last year to divest South Africa was also the right decision to make. It had brought a lot of positive impacts on our balance sheet. It has improved our liquidity and significantly reduced our debt. So in terms of future look, I believe as a strategy, we are focusing on the Nigerian market as Lafarge Africa is concerned. 
uh, again, if there is any investment opportunities uh, in the surrounding countries, it could be the responsibility of the group rather than Lafarge Africa, but our main focus is the local market. Okay, thank you. Um, we also have a question from Odume Festos. Looking at the challenges in the economy, are we going to expect increase in your products? Increase in terms of volumes? Yes. And variety, perhaps? And variety, because we are diversified in our product lines, and we always uh, make our uh, benchmark is the customer needs and the applications on the ground. And whenever there is an application of need of a new product, we always leverage on our presence as being part of a multinational company. We have a huge research and development labs all over the world. And this is one of the big advantage for us that give us an edge in developing new products uh, whenever is needed. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from Ismail Lawal. What strategy did you adopt to smartly reduce your debt profile? Well, the debt has mainly uh, significantly reduced by the divestment of South Africa. This is one element which has brought a lot of cash uh, to the organization. However, uh, our uh, strategy of cash and cost optimization, improving our uh, networking capital, uh, increasing our ratio of uh, cash conversion to EBIT or EBITDA uh, is a main contributor towards maintaining our debt at the right level and improving year over year. Okay. Um, we have a question here from Chris Ugu. What is your strategy in maintaining a stable and efficient plant? Well, Lafarge Africa is, again, uh, we, as I said at the beginning, we, we maintain the, the highest level of technology. We keep on developing our plants. We keep developing our people and resources to be at the right level. So the continuous improvement on our plan is a journey. And we keep developing that. We keep optimizing in our cost while we are developing the quality of our products. Our people plays a significant role uh, in this journey of development. We have the top skilled uh, employees, uh, I believe, in the country where they are bringing a lot of value in sustaining our business and improving our cost. Okay, thank you. Um, this question is from Dr. Itita. It says, what will make Lafarge Cement the most preferred cement brand in Nigeria? Well, uh, it's been always the most preferred cement in Nigeria. We, we are the ones who's been here for 60 years. I think our brands, our products are very well known to everybody. Uh, we led the cement industry in the country. And I think uh, we are the preferred cement product in Nigeria. Okay, so that kind of leads to the next question from Mr. Ayodeji. It says, how is Lafarge positioned for growth to continue to remain a market leader in the cement industry, given um, recent competition? Well, competition is always a healthy thing. I mean, uh, the, the countries without competition has more downsides than upsides. So we believe competition is a good tool for all of us to enhance our performance, to move forward, to optimize on our cost and become more customer oriented in serving our uh, customers at different levels. So we always welcome the competition and we are always trying our best to be ahead of everybody. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from Mr. Ari Boye. It says, is Lafat considering working with the government um, to fix roads and um, reduce their tax obligations as it were? As we speak, we have two projects on roads, uh, one in Ashaka, one in Cross River, where we are already engaging with uh, the governors, with the states, and yes, we are, and we are developing heavily our concrete roads strategy as well in both states. And I think this will be a role model to be considered uh, in terms of the new roads construction, because concrete roads saves a lot in terms of sustainability and maintenance uh, going forward. So. We are using our own cement. We are using the positions we have in the states where we operate to launch the concrete uh, roads uh, in these states to be used as prototypes, hoping that this can be scaled to a bigger size across the country. Okay.
Okay, thank you. Um, we have another question from Adibwe. It says, currently the cement consumption in Nigeria is less than the current capa capacity combined of all the players. What is Lafarge doing to optimize capacity of above 10 million metric tons? Well, again, it's, uh, the, the market in Nigeria is like so many other countries. It has its own cycles. Uh, currently, the, uh, the current consumption in Nigeria might not reflect the full needs of the country if we want to consider the infrastructure projects, the number of housing uh, replacing in urban areas. So we believe there is a huge potential in the market that will gradually start to absorb the overcapacity. Okay, um, we have a question here. Some years ago, ready mix was a big part of your strategy. What is the plan now? What is the demand for ready mix in Nigeria? Well, I, I think these questions are the, the last question and this question is very much correlated. Uh, ready mix uh, is a sign of development and maturity uh, in the construction segment in general. So the more we have mega projects, the more we have concrete roads, we more we have uh, big facilities like huge hospitals, compounds, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is more and more enhancing uh, the concrete business. So I think the country, I believe personally that the country is going towards that direction. And I believe that the ready mix future in the country is very promising. Uh, the more and more we go towards uh, uh, the development of moving from conventional construction into a, a mature way of construction. Okay, we have just about three minutes to go for questions. So I'll just pick a few of the um, of the questions we have lined up. So we have one from Otto Abassi. It says, in driving your sustainability plan, will you explore a green bond in the future to demonstrate the value of commercializing sustainable development? Uh, this is a point of consideration and it was part of our webinars actually in sustainable development uh, that we have addressed. And it if it's maturing in, in the country, I think we can and should take opportunity of that. It's too early to give a clear answer, but yes, it's part of our focus areas that we are considering. Okay. Um, so we also have a question here from Dorcas. Um, what percentage of cement do you export versus consume in the country? Do we expect any expansion or divestment in the future? Our prime focus is the local market. So uh, the, the local market is, uh, is where we need to uh, address all our attention. And as I mentioned, I mean, Nigeria is one of the countries that has certain seasonalities because of the rainy season. Uh, uh, whenever there is an opportunity for export, we take advantage of that. But on overall, our focus is the local market. Okay. Um, so what is your customer mix? This is from an anonymous attendee. What is your customer mix? Government versus retail versus institutions? Well, we serve all the customer segments. I don't have the percentages in mind right now, but uh, we are available across the board and, and we serve all our customers at the same level. Okay. Um, so what should we, from Odume Festus, what should we expect from Lafarge in the area of sustainability policy for the environment? Uh, I, I would encourage everybody to uh, really check our portal as well as Lafarge Holson uh, as a group a portal. Uh, all of the initiatives of sustainability uh, are addressed there. We are very, very engaged in all sustainable development elements. The country has issued 17 sustainable development goals to be delivered by 2030. Uh, if I'm not wrong, we are engaged on 14 of the sustainable development goals out of the 17. Uh, we are heavily engaged uh, with uh, the United Nations, uh, with the urbanization, with uh, the local governors uh, and the state and federal government uh, in terms of developing the sustainability programs. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we are engaged in uh, environmental aspects. We are engaged in education. We are, education, we are engaged in uh, water treatments. Uh, so there are different elements around the 17 sustainable development goals that we are contributing heavily towards. Okay, so I have um, five questions here from Abiola Misola. So I'll take the first two and let you respond, then the next two and then the final one. So the first two are, what is the medium term outlook for Lafarge? And what is the management view of the competitive environment? 
Well, I think we answered this uh, earlier. Uh, uh, we, we remain uh, keeping a very positive medium and long-term uh, vision and view on uh, the market in Nigeria. And we believe the market will evolve positively over the coming years. Uh, again, competition is, is uh, something which we believe uh, it excites and energizes everybody to do its best to serve the customers. So uh, that's, that's my position on the competition. Okay. Um, is management, so I'll take the next two. Is management considering increasing capacity? What is the capacity utilization as at H1 2020? Um, and then the next question, what is your outlook on cement prices in light of competitive promotions in the market? Well, utilization differs from one quarter to the other. Uh, we maintain a healthy utilization rate. I think as, as a, a main player in the market, we, we maintain a fair uh, market share. Uh, however, on the expansion, uh, we take in consideration the market dynamics. And if the market is in need for expansion, we are putting uh, our plans in place. OK, so the last question um, here, what was the on in from this um, um, participant? What was the most profitable segment in H1 2020? And can you give a breakdown on segment margins? Well, uh, the, the, the main segment is still remains the cement. I mean, the, the, uh, or you're talking about the market segment. It's, we, we have to acknowledge uh, Nigeria is still uh, a 95% or 94% backed cement. Uh, and backed cement means uh, retailers, uh, distributors, and so on. So the retail segment is probably taking most of the attention for the time being. We look forward to the evolvement of the market towards a ready mix and a different style of construction where maybe by that time, the market segmentation will differ. Okay, so we have a question here from Bola De. Um, says, how will the company manage effects of inflation on the bottom line? <coughs> Optimization. So I think our initiatives towards cost uh, initiatives uh, and, and reduction of cost is more on efficiency optimization. Uh, we have the teams that deliver uh, the results based on our current performance and inflation is something that we have to uh, deal with by more and more efficient operations at our plants. Okay, um, so we have um, several questions here on um, market share, so I'll just keep, um, group them together essentially. <clears throat> Are you considering mergers or acquisitions with either local or foreign um, bodies to, the, to remain the true market leader? And what are the strategies you have in place to gain, to maintain your market share and capture new markets? Well, it's a very uh, uh, a political question. Let me put it like that. We don't, we don't have any plans for the time being. Uh, again, some of the decisions are managed on a, a global level as being part of a, a worldwide organization. Uh, so I think for the time being, there is no plans for such. Okay, so um, the final question, um, is Lafarge planning to expand her capacity in South-South Nigeria, specifically considering the market opportunities? Our, our position in the South-South is solid. Uh, we have a big plant over there, and I think we are, we are comfortable with the current situation as it is. Okay, thank you very much. So I'll now turn it over to um, Alhaji um, Yusuf Rashid, the doyen of the market, to give his remarks, after which we'll have uh, Mr. Olumide Bolumoli take over for the closing gong. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Khalid Eldokana. And I also... Good afternoon. Welcome you, Mr. Lulu Alade Akeyemi. I welcome both of you on behalf of the daily member of the Nigerian Stock Exchange. To the floor, even though we are doing it electronically of the Nigerian Stock Exchange, it is our pleasure to have you today. I also want to say good afternoon to Olumide who is ably representing the chief executive of Nigerian Stock Exchange and other eminent person hereby present. On behalf of the entire 
stockbroking community. I want to let Mr. Dokani and his team know that we are very, very pleased to have you. We, your company, it's a company very well known to us. It's a company that has been around for a while, like you said in your statement. And it is also a company that is very well known to Nigerian investors. You are also operating in a sector that every Nigerian in one way or the other is very interested in. Therefore, that makes you a prime target of interest to all of us. With that level of interest from the stockbroking and investment community, I must tell you that a lot is expected of your company. Primarily because of the leadership role that your company has been playing, particularly in this sector. Cement industry is an important and key sector to the development of Nigeria. It presents its own challenges, but it also presents its own opportunities. Nigerian investing public have supported you in the past by overwhelmingly buying your shares. And you have also performed reasonably well in the past but also paying good dividends to Nigerian investors. Therefore, Nigerian investors and the investing community look forward to you to continue in that stride. We have looked at some of the challenges that you have had in the recent past. And the effect of some of those challenges on your performance in terms of dividend payout, in terms of your pricing, which are very key to the interest of investors on the Nigerian stock exchange. And it is the expectation of Nigerian investor and Nigerian stockbroking community that with you now in charge of the affair the rising expectation of Nigerian investing community will be met in terms of better returns on your investment and also better prospects on your company. If you have looked at some of the questions that have been thrown at you, you will have deciphered from me that it bothers on you are noted to be the leader in this sector. And some of those questions were indirectly asking, what are your strategy to continue to remain as a leader? Because the truth must be told. I mean, you are the, you are the leader, but you are having also challenges now. You used to be the lone leader, but now you have many leaders in your sector. And the interest of the investing public is we want Lafayette to continue to be the main leader, not just one of the leaders. And therefore, you need to reassure and work your strategy and objective towards how do I retain that number one position. And that really is the import of some of the questions that have been thrown at you, whether you want to consider major or whether you want to consider further acquisition or whether you want to expand it on there. And I think you will look at that very seriously um, because much is expected of your company. And in looking at that also, we want you to bear in mind 
the Nigerian Stock Exchange and the Stock Broking Community are your partner in progress. We wish you well. We want to work with you to make sure that you relate in that leadership position. But we can only do that if you also reciprocate. And how do you reciprocate? By being close to us. You have to be very close to your financial advisor, your store brokers, your issuers, and the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Pricing on the Nigerian Stock Exchange are determined by three major factors. The first and very important one is, of course, your publisher account, which you went through in your presentation today. But as you know, those are historical. We will look at those historical figures and look at the import of it and reflect it in your account. But also the information you provide for us, like some of what you said today about your prospect, your strategy, and how you are combating challenges from your competitor are also very key. And therefore, that's why you must remain very close to your brokers and your issuers. You must tell them whatever challenges you are having. You must also tell them whatever difficulties that you are having. Tell them what is it that you are preparing to overcome those challenges. They might have input because if they understand your problem, they might have input, and not only that, they will reflect your problem properly in your pricing. If they don't understand your problem because you do not provide the information, even though you provide your publisher can, then you are leaving room for what we call public rumor. And we don't want a company like your own to be priced on the, pub, on the basis of public essay. But those are the three bases on which pricing happens. So if you want your company to be priced properly, then provide as much information as possible. And don't limit it to just publish account. Limit it to your management information, limit it to developmental information, limit it to even your developmental challenges. So that once the community understand what is it you are trying to do and where is it that you are going, they will understand the immediate or medium term challenges that you are having, and they reflect all of this in your pricing accordingly. Like I said, the stock exchange, the stock broken community, and the broker, they are your friends, and they want to remain your friend. But you also have to take them as your friend. You have to be close to them. You have to consult them. Don't say any matter. It's only, I consult them only when I'm talking about listing. No, consult them on every issue that affects your production, every issue that affects your productivity, everything that affects your profitability. And you will find that, that you have a pool of knowledge within the investing community that will be able to share with you. Like you have seen, like it's been reflected in some of the questions that you are asked. People will not only give you information about what is happening in Nigeria, they will give you information about what is happening outside Nigeria. Because Nigerian capital market is okay based in Nigeria, but it has also relationships all over the world. And we do draw on our knowledge of what is happening in South Africa, what is happening in New York, or what is happening in America. And we provide all of this to help our company that are listed on Nigerian stock exchange so that they can also emerge from being a Nigerian company into a global player. It is against the background, like I have said, that I'm welcoming you and I'm saying, please be close to us. We are your friend. We want to see you back as number one in this sector. I want to see you paying robust dividends like you used to pay to our investing public so that you can continue to be the darling of Nigerian investment public. It is my pleasure again to welcome you and thank you for your presentation. We hope with determination and assurance that you are giving us so much within a short time will be expected of Lafarge. You are welcome and thank you very much for the presentation. Thank, thank you, Jamia. So
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Julian. Uh, by my time, we're just hitting 2.30. So may I invite the management of Lafarge to close the market? It's our pleasure. Thank you. As you know, distinguished guests, that is that familiar sound represents the end of another successful trading day. Um, I want to congratulate the management of Lafarge Africa PLC for this successful hosting of their Parks Behind the Figures. I would also like to thank our participants who joined us via various social media channels, including YouTube. Um, do continue to stay safe. This event has not ended. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you.